So with a number six brush and clean water on it, I'm just going to soften the base of these trees very slowly, just with a damp, clean brush, merging it into the ground so it, so it looks like it's really growing. And then with a touch of green on the brush, we'll just give the impression of a bit of grass growing around the base of the tree. Maybe take a touch of green up into the trunk. The tree needs a little bit of detailing now with some dark colour, so I'll just mix a bit more dark brown. Burnt sienna and ultramarine again. And let's emphasise the shadow side of the tree at ground level before it dries. Well, it's still soft around the base there. I can use the side of the brush to maybe put a little bit of texture in to give the impression of bark. So you just catch the raised surface of the rough paper. And I think finally on this right hand one of the two, we'll have another branch coming out. Okay, now moving over to these silver birches, I'm going to get some more of the dark brown colour. And this time I've picked up the number two, the detailer brush. And I want to try and give the impression of all the little knots and marks in the, uh, in the bark, trying at the same time to emphasise the rounded shape of the tree trunks. Okay, so there's a bit of drying time for that before we go on to the next stage. So we'll look now at this tree just to the right of the path. Quite a dark colour, so I want some more burnt sienna and ultramarine. A really thick mixture, a really strong mixture. And I've got a number four brush. Starting with the very point of the brush to show where it meets the ground. That may need a softening a little bit later on. And then as I work my way up, I'm going to try with this tree to leave a few gaps that will help me to put some foliage in front of it. As I work my way up, because even as the brush gets drier, it helps to create these, these little gaps in it. I can also put a few branches in. Still working with the number four brush. And it goes right up the top. And out of the top of the scene. A little touch of lemon yellow near the base to suggest some grasses. And then a touch more softening in. Now while that's drying, I can be taking the remaining masking fluid off the path. And we'll mix a bit of colour now for this pathway. I'm going to take some more purple colour. Ultramarine and rose madder. And a bit more of the raw sienna and burnt sienna, the autumn colour. I've got a number six brush and I'm just going to wet the path with clean water before dropping in a bit of that autumn colour and plenty of that nice warm purple. The purple and the orange really work well together. And we'll leave it to dry. For the next stage I'm now going to rub all the remaining masking fluid off that's covering these boulders and stones. So then to paint the stones, I'm going to mix a range of colours. I've got a little bit of raw sienna and burnt sienna. I've got some ultramarine and rose madder. And I've got some dark brown again, burnt sienna and ultramarine. I've got a really good brush full of it. So rather than wash it all off, I'll save that colour till I'm ready for it. And I've got a number four brush, starting with the autumn colour. Brushing a bit of that onto the stone. Again, remembering that the light's coming from the right. We'll put a bit of that purple colour over towards the left to suggest shadow. And just before it dries, a little bit of the dark brown at the left-hand side of the stone, furthest away from the light. And just let those colours merge into the background. Just before they dry, 
I'm going to take a touch of lemon yellow and drop that in at the base of the stone to give the impression of bits of grass and weed growing around the base of the stone. Now it's the exact same procedure now for all these stones. So the final stage of this picture really is just a bit of dry brushwork to suggest the foliage and some shadows and a bit of general tidying up. So I've got a, a number six brush and I'm taking some lemon yellow. This is neat lemon yellow. There's hardly any water added to this, just a bit of moisture that was on the brush because lemon yellow is opaque. So I can lay it onto darker color using the brush on its side just to suggest some foliage. Starting with the lemon and we can add a bit of red to that as well. Um, particularly over this large dark tree here on the right of the path. It is important that you don't dilute your lemon yellow because whilst it's an opaque colour, it's only opaque when it's quite thick. Now to vary this, I'm taking some lemon yellow again and this time adding a bit of burnt sienna so that it's still opaque but it's now more of an orange and we'll carry on adding a touch of that here and there. Now with a number four brush, I'm going to mix some shadow color, going back to that ultramarine and rose madder, that nice warm purple color. And we'll start to look at the trees Reminding myself of the direction of the shadows. The shadows have got to go from right to left. So we'll start up here from these large trees, then from the smaller birches. The contours of the land are described by the shadows as well. Right across the path. And then we can lose it amongst the ground at the left hand side there. One or two of these trees, I can bring a bit further down now into the middle distance. It's nice to have that nice dappled shadow in the very foreground. So we'll call that one finished. The vital point in this scene are those beautiful warm colours, the oranges and browns and yellows. The path is important as well as you can follow it into the woodland and it feels like you really are there. Remember the main thing is always light and atmosphere. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available to order from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.